Hey, everybody. Uh, it is Eddie and Josh today. Chris is off doing his own thing. He doesn't really like this nearly as much to join us today. So Eddie and I felt like there's been some recent things in the news that we felt like it was important to discuss on a scientific basis, not a political basis. So there has been a certain human being in the news who's been talking about electric batteries and sharks and how if a boat sank in the water, he would rather be electrocuted by the boat's battery than deal with the attack from the malicious sharks. What would happen if the boat sank from its weight and you're in the boat and you have this tremendously powerful battery and the battery is now underwater and there's a shark that's approximately 10 yards over there. So there's a shark 10 yards away from the boat, 10 yards or here. Do I get electrocuted if the boat is sinking, water goes over the battery, the boat is sinking? Do I stay on top of the boat and get electrocuted? Or do I jump over by the shark and not get electrocuted? Well, we're going to discuss why both of those are fallacies and see what you guys think. Before you get into it, I just want to I want to say that I feel like a certain orange skin individual needs to represent be represented here. I feel like he would say it's definitely a fallacy. It's the biggest fallacy. It's the biggest fallacy anyone's ever seen. No one's ever seen a fallacy this big before. Ask all my ex-wives about how big my fallacy was. And I felt like today, in honor of our discussion, I was going to wear my <clears throat> fishy shirt. As you can see, there are some little fishies on here. And my <laughs> hook hat. And uh, so we'll we'll get into it and see what we all think. So electric boats... Sharks, batteries, like I said, a lot of been lots been in the news lately. But let's talk about the actual science. So electric boat batteries are completely sealed. Okay. Most boat manufacturers are not going to just have some random battery that's floating around on a boat that instantly can, if the boat sinks, electrocute everybody. They're completely sealed. So if they're submerged and the boat cracks in half, the battery will not electrocute you. In fact, multiple electric boat manufacturers confirm their batteries are rated to water immersion specs suitable for submarines. So that in and of itself should have just shut down the conversation completely. But I think this person that we were talking about, he was riffing because I was told that his um, monitor was broken and he didn't couldn't read it his was the, um It was the teleprompter he doesn't need. Right. Uh, obviously, he needs it. But hey, listen, it got us a great episode. So let's dive into it a little more. When a boat sinks, the battery is going to be fully submerged and you're in the water, right? You're, you're, you're not going to stay on the boat unless you're a complete and total idiot. You're going to jump off the boat. Well, the science shows that the electrical current wants to flow from one terminal in the battery to the other. So it's going to take the easiest possible path through the water to do so. Most likely, you're at least a few feet from the boat, and it's sinking, and the electrons, they're not going to just swim all the way out from the battery that's a negative terminal and try to shock you and then go all the way back to the positive terminal. They're going to do what science shows, which is head to the path of least resistance, which is going to be from one terminal to the next. Well, that's the thing. Electrons are so prone to following the path of least resistance that there's actually a quantum physical principle named after this is called quantum tunneling. Um, electrons in their search for getting to where they're going with the least possible resistance because they are so fucking lazy um, will actually travel through solid objects just randomly to just appear on the other side. Totally normal. Yeah. So um, let's let's just take this one step further. Electrons don't have minds of their own. They are drawn to a very specific thing. So unless that thing in the water is so powerful that the electrons have to be pulled to it, which is, in this case, a human body versus an electric motor, I don't see it possible, right? They are going well, to so be pulled between the electric motor. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm here cracking jokes and stuff, but the truth of the matter is, yes, electrons always take the path of least resistance. 
So, um, you know, the battery's two terminals are a couple of inches apart. Um, and one terminal has one charge, the other terminal has the other charge, which means these electrons will be pulled over to the opposing charge. Opposites attract. That's the way that works. Um, and water has a low enough um, <clears throat> resistance to electrons that they can just make that jump if they if if the conditions were right. So that's that's uh, the interesting point. Let let's go to that for a second because right. people may not recognize this. Right, the body, the human body, has an electrical charge running through it. In fact, it's enough to power the heart and the brain and mm -hmm. the nervous system and all of this stuff. So there is electricity charging through us at all times. Mm -hmm. But if but you're very immersed, small, what? It's a very small amount. I mean, it's measurable, but it's it's not like if you were to jump in the water with like a live electrical wire, it's not like it wouldn't even register. Correct. And more importantly, seawater is way more conductive than the human body. So electric currents would just jump from one part of the busted battery to the other. It's not like it would jump all the way through the seawater to you. The mm -hmm. seawater is immersing the battery. So it's going to stay, as you said before, closest to whatever it was, the path of least resistance. Right. Well, and um, electrons always will seek ground. Um, I don't necessarily mean like ground, ground like the floor, although that is what it means. Um, but it's why static electricity from the sky falls so um, powerfully to the ground and you get these lightning strikes. And so it's more likely that they'll make their way toward that than toward you. And even if you did feel some kind of a jolt, it would be very minimal unless this battery was some, you know, 100,000 volt monster and it was right next to you. It's right. just super unlikely. But let's be fair and talk about the possibility that electric boats, boats in general, can be in freshwater. And freshwater is actually less conductive than the human body. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a lake, well, then your body is a little bit more of a conductor than the fresh water. So guess what? Just move a little further away from the boat because it's not that conductive that it's still going to jump through the fresh water to your body. So we've proven that if the boat is sinking, the electricity would be nine times out of 10. It's not going to hurt you if you right. just move slightly away from the boat. Right. Well, the other thing I'm thinking of too is there are freshwater sharks, if I remember correctly, but I, I think he was talking about like great whites, like big sharks that can maul you because they're curious. Um, I don't think that anything like that exists in freshwater. Like the, the well, freshwater bull sharks, sh bull sharks can come all the way up through freshwater. Literally, can that they? is the story of Jaws from the 19. I think it was like 1913 or 1914. There was a series of attacks in the Raritan <laughs> River in New Jersey, Jersey strong. Uh, uh, and multiple kids were attacked and killed in the river. And then years later, Peter Benchley, the writer of Jaws, turned that into Jaws. And Spielberg obviously was like, look, can't put this in the river. Let's put it on a beach. Benchley had written it on by the beach, but it came from the story of bull sharks attacking people in a, in a river. And that's all to say, if by chance the boat's battery is discharging in the water, but you're at a distance away from the electricity that the battery is discharging, it might actually repel sharks. And that's the second part of this whole thing. So sharks have electroreceptors in their nose. They use it to find the heartbeats of prey. Now, those prey are generally fish or seals. They're not humans. Sure, they can seek out humans, but sharks are not generally seeking out humans. And when the electrical field is stronger than the shark's general prey of fish or seals, it overwhelms their internal system and in fact, can repel them. And there's been some science behind this where they've started putting electrical discs in the water on fish hooks. And it does not repel the fish because the fish don't have that electrical sensor in their nose, but it does repel the sharks. So just thinking about that, the, the, the fact that their noses are so sensitive to electric fields, so anything with a higher electrical output than a fish or a seal is going to deter them. And then the last part of this whole thing is, you know, Trump's been deathly afraid of sharks forever. There are a lot of people who are deathly afraid of sharks. The thing with good remember, reason. Yeah, they're scary. Are you kidding me? It is a biological killing machine with a an infinite can opener attached to its face. 
I mean, all of that is true. That's a, a very scary description that you just put in. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, most times sharks are not looking to attack people. They see food and because people are swimming in and around the food or wading in and around the food, like bait fish, right? There's mm -hmm. tons of bait fish in the shallow waters along the western coast of Florida, along the eastern coast of Florida. And these mm -hmm. are where all the predominantly big shark attacks are happening and just recently as well. But what nobody talked about was there is a huge amount of mullet right now, which are these bait fish that are migrating back and forth in the shallows. So the sharks are going to the bait fish. They're chasing after the bait fish. They get a little crazy because there's so much food going on. And Eddie, you and I both know that when we have a low blood sugar attack, we are hungry. Hangry. Well, we will eat anything. Hangry AF. Listen, I hated peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I hated beef and turkey jerky and jerky in general. And the first time I hiked to the bottom of the Grand Canyon with my best friends, I was so hungry that those were now my favorite foods. <laughs> and that that like hunger urge, that like instant gratification of not being starving anymore was so strong that I still love those things and I eat them all the time. So yeah, I get it. The other thing too is sharks have really shitty eyesight, like terrible eyesight. Uh, their eyes don't even point forward. They almost don't even need them really because they're not using that sense as much as the other ones. Um, and when they eat, their eyes roll back into their head. It's a defense mechanism, which again, who knows why? Because their eyes are basically useless. Um, but all that to say, yeah, they're not going to be, you know, picking out the little pieces that they're eating. Oh, that's a human. I need to stay away. No, they're just going to open and close their mouths and whatever's in there is in there. And that's it. And by the way, and there are sharks out there who will seek out humans, but it's, it's really rare that sharks are just looking for humans. And the ones well, that and, are and, generally, and you, don't, you don't tend to run into those in the ocean. That's more of like when you go buy a used car, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a anybody, different setting. Yeah, Carvana sponsor us for what we just said, please. Carvana, CarMax, what kind of sharks do you guys have? <laughs> so the other thing is that it just so happens right now that all these shark attacks are occurring during the time of the sharks mating season. And Eddie, mm. you know what happens when sharks get it on and they make baby sharks? Baby shark, do 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 baby shark, do 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 baby shark, do 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 Well, so all that happens, and when that's going on, and you know, when you're in the mood, Eddie, sometimes a little biting, a little more testosterone, the potential to lose your mind. Nine volt battery to the sack just to spice things up. Maybe the batteries are making the sharks horny. Sharks are freaky. I mean, sharks are freaky. Come on, when was the last time you bit into a toaster strudel, rolled your eyes back to the back of your head? I mean, that was you yesterday they, for me. You know these sharks are getting freaky. They're, you know, they're getting their they're getting their swerve on, and it's like, <laughs> like, dude, dude. If I'm in the water and I get attacked by a shark, am I going to be angry? Yeah, I'm going to be angry. That's, that's I heard sucks. sharks. I heard sharks don't like kosher though. If it's a Jewish shark, they like gefilte fish. Um, but I feel like most sharks would eat me because I'm Cuban. So I more than likely taste like lemon uh, <laughs> zest pork. All this is to say that a lot of stuff was said in the past couple of days, week, whatever it is at this point now. And I'd say 98% of it is just spouting stuff that's not based in any science. So we just wanted to bring to your attention and what's going on and the true science behind it. And how you don't really have to be that fearful of being electrocuted in the water by a battery powered boat or being mangled to death by a shark. Uh, there's always the possibility, but really it's right. probability versus possibility. But more importantly, if you guys tune in for the next episode after this, we're actually going to test this theory with Eddie. We're going to Miami, we're going to rent an electric boat chum the water just a little bit because we want we actually want some sharks there and we're well, gonna see and by, what happens and by chum the water he means they're gonna feed me 20 tacos from taco bell and i'm gonna just crap my pants in the water
I guarantee that is going to be a viral sensation. Uh, as always, you know, in the name of science, and and Chris was sad he couldn't be here, but next time. I don't know, man. Chris sent me a severed horse head in a box. I don't, I don't know how sad he is. He sent me a severed shark's head in the box. That's pretty. It means he loves you because the horse is easy. The shark. Yeah, but I could, I could, I could picture, I could picture Chris getting a shark in a headlock. I mean, sure. If anybody's going to get a shark in a headlock, it's Chris. Yeah, we yeah. love you, Chris. All right. Well, that's it, everybody. Peace out.